today we have here the masterpiece All'inizio della fine, meaning from the beginning to the end, made by Matthew Cologne. This is actually his first piece made, but for being his first, he really knocked it out of the park, showing good promise for his future. This piece was inspired by quite a few paintings. Obviously, Madonna and Child with Two Angels, made by Filippo Lippi, having copied the form of the subjects completely, but also Cezanne's Mont Saint Victoria, and is also inspired by Matisse's Favouism style of color. There is on record the original idea of the piece, and how it's supposed to look like. It seems very clear from this that the goal was to abstract everything to color, but he decides to keep the clothes the same only changing the skin of Mary, Jesus, and the angels. Perhaps he was trying to confront the controversy of the painting and the sculptures of religious figures, how at the time it seemed wrong because it was said that if you make a painting of God, people will worship the painting, not God. So he made everything unhuman. It makes it clear that the painting is not Jesus, Mary, and so on. So naturally, you would never pray to the painting, but just be reminded to pray to them. It's actually mentioned in the notes that the artist made, stating, When I would pray, I would only think of the sculptures or paintings, not the higher beings, not the ideas of the beings. So his goal was to make Madonna and Child, but without the detail, so that he would not fool the audience into thinking that they're the real portrait. Instead, he'd use symbols so the subjects in the painting can be identified. The next page, Cologne writes how the piece was made. You can see that there's pen used to edit the notes to account for what had changed or what happened in reality compared to the plan. For example, when he wrote down how he had to glue everything down, it was actually too hard for everything to be in the right orientation that he had to tape everything to each other before he had to glue it. Or how he added objects to the piece and why he did. But I'll get back to that. The reason why I mentioned that he marked up the original plan is because it gives the piece more complexity. It shows how it could have been and makes you appreciate what it is now. It gives the title of masterpiece to El Nitsu de la Fine. Though I can end here, I want to take you through the journey of how it was made. Given what we know through the notes of the artist left behind, we can truly comprehend what we see. First, to make this piece, Cologne printed out the painting Madonna and Child by Filippo Lippi. He cuts out the figures in the painting, then makes an outline of the figures as a template in case if he loses the original printer cutout as his backup. After having all the whole body templates, he then cuts out Mary's hands and head as a part so that the skin could be a different color from the cloth. Makes it easier to identify Mary. Using the template, he traced out and cut colored paper so that all figures mimic the original, with each color having a different meaning, purple being skin, white angel essence being their being, blue is cloth, green is objects, and later, orange is holiness represented, and pink is the midground. For the next step, he had to glue everything in the same position as Filippo Lippi made it. The only problem was, how I mentioned before, it was too hard to put all the paper in the perfect orientation that he had to tape the hands and head of Mary to her body before gluing it down. Then he taped the angels holding baby Jesus with Jesus along with another angel which is between Jesus' arm. Finally, he tapes the two pieces together and glues it to the yellow colored paper. The yellow must have been a reference to the Byzantine era where all Christian art had golden backgrounds. Originally, that was it. It was supposed to be a less detailed interpretation of Madonna and Child with Father's coloring. According to the notes, it was someone who said he could add more and it was his own mind saying it was plain that gave him the drive to add objects. So he was digging deeper on his motivation on the piece. He asked himself, why is he making this? And it struck him. It was for symbolism. He realized that if he added crosses and a hill on the background, it gives the piece more symbolism while filling up the empty space and gives the piece more complexity, which I'll get back to. To make the crosses, he used his rosaries as an outline. 
because it was flat and small, he had two, so one was larger and the other one was smaller, and made two outlines with the smaller one and one with the larger cross. Then he used the beads of the rosary to make hills that the crosses would be on. He traced it and cut it, glued it on the paper. He uses rosaries also because rosaries are a symbol of the Virgin Mary, which is being depicted in the story. He places a hill on Jesus' head as to serve for a foreshadowing for how he would die, but it looks like a crown that Jesus is wearing, announcing to the audience who he is. The problem is that it looks like that a little too much, that it can no longer be interpreted as crosses in the background. It's just a crown. The idea leads to the next level of adjustment to the plan, but like many things, I'll get back to that. To balance out the piece, Cologne added a halo to Mary's head. It served as a confirmation to the audience that it was Mary. To make a good halo, he needed an object that had an elliptic base that he could trace. So he used his glue container's base, he traced it, cut the outside and inside of the orange circle, and colored paper, and glued it to the soon-to-be masterpiece. Colin was not happy making the crosses only look like a crown. He wanted it to look like both a crucifixion in the background and a crown at the same time. So what better way of doing that than pulling Suzanne? This time, he cut pink colored paper to fill the gaps of the yellow background that was below the top of Jesus' head, filling in more than half of the art piece after everything was already glued, so he had to cut out perfect shapes that covered the yellow gap. What Cologne was doing and succeeding at was making different layers of perspective by having different colors, like how Paul Cezanne made the painting Mont Santa Victoria with no shading by using dark green to light green to blue to make the foreground, midground, and background. Cologne makes figures the foreground, the pink, the midground because it's ahead of the gold but behind the subjects, and the gold, along with the crosses, would be overlapped by everything, making it the background. All in all, this art piece has so many hidden symbols, like how Mary's head and halo are popping out to you, like she's inviting you, being the largest advocate in the Catholic faith, and how the angel is all white, not differentiating by clothing because if an angel is on earth it's not like you would go to a store to buy a shirt the cloth is part of the angel or how everything is mirrored from the original to symbolize how it's the same as Filippo Lippi's but different at the same time or how he uses the rosaries to make crosses or how he decides to make a golden background by making early Christian art and so much more this is the reason why I would call the Lanizio della Fine a remasterpiece Thank you.